tell me about the early days of Anglesey. How did you end up down there with the block? Well, <coughs> initially when I graduated, I went down to Rosebud to join Neil Sutherland in general practice, which was a bloody mistake. For the start, I was close to the farm, and secondly, Neil Sutherland was a mean, miserable bastard. <coughs> he paid me £25 a week, I think, for working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And of course, being inexperienced, I put up with it. But then <coughs> we started the surgery at Rye in the house called Rather, R A T H A, mm -hmm. a weatherboard place, which obviously was got up as old as their home. And um, <coughs> I had a surgery in the front of that, and the, the waiting room was the front veranda, which was closed. <laughs> in. Uh, uh, quite a reasonably busy practice there. Um, so that retirement people down there, or holiday makers, or a lot of people on uh, retired people. Um, but I used to augment my income, my personal income, which I didn't put into the practice, uh, doing veterinary work. Mm -hmm. As you know, I used to neuter cats for um, two guineas. I think it was a guinea for the surgeon and a guinea for the anaesthetist. And mum was the and mum was the anaesthetist. And we used to put the cat into a, a cart on mm -hmm. and pour ether down the, <laughs> the till it went out <laughs> until it stopped scratching and carrying on inside. And then whip it out and whip the testicles out and tie them off, tie off the bleeding points which the old ladies used to love. Oh, the doctor's so, so very good. He, he, there's no blood at all in, uh, when he does the job. So I was getting quite a lot of referrals from aged people uh, up to other people get to getting their cats neutered. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was one thing. And of course, there were dogs brought with various problems. And uh, I was also called out in the middle of the night, or early in the morning, to a bloody cow that had gone down with milk fever. But anyhow, what did you ask me? How I got involved? Anglesey. With Anglesey. That was the start of the practice, how I got involved in general practice. And <coughs> I was with Sutherland for a couple of years, and he joined up with the Edwards brothers to form a big general practice in that area. And I didn't like... Uh, Keith Edwards, he was the elder Edward Edwards. Uh, he was a mean bastard too. So I said, I'm I'm leaving. And Jack Sanders, with whom I'd mm. done my course, um, asked me to join him and two other Jewish doctors in in the practice in Footscray. And the reason that he invited me to join was because. He was running the branch practice in Yarraville, in Benbow Street, and he'd missed a kid who'd bitten by a snake. The kid was brought to him with projectile vomiting, and he didn't know what the hell was wrong with the kid, but he'd been bitten by a snake, and the kid died. So Jack Sanders' name, of course, in the area was right base level. So I was to replace him in that practice, and I ran that for two or three years and then um, opposite was Louis Miller who was a plumber yeah uh, Les Miller and who was uh, down the bottom of Noble Street yeah he had a house in Noble Street and he invited us to go down one weekend to to stay in the house mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> we got involved with the golf club and uh, once Went I got involved that. with that and got the, the golf club fever so you never played golf before Oh, well, as a teenager, I'd had one hit mm. on the Austin awesome golf course, <coughs> but of course I knew bugger all about mm. it. That was the only other time I'd held a golf club. So, uh, anyhow, we got involved with the Anglesey Golf Club, and then I decided I'd, I'd shift down to Geelong to work there and be close to Anglesey. Mm. Because we joined the club. <coughs> you never joined a Melbourne club or anything like that? No. Later on I did. I was a country member of Keysborough. Mm. Um, that was all. Keysborough I've got reciprocal membership with at Port Macquarie. Have you? Yeah, well, it's Keysborough. Yeah, well, Keysborough is the back of Chelsea. Mm. And, uh, I think. 
Uh, no, it might be Greensboro. Greensboro, yes, it's yeah. a golf course. Yeah. Um, so that that that's how we got involved with Anglesey, and because um, I decided to shift from Footscray, we bought a block in Noble Street for ninety pounds. That was the cost of the the block, and. We built the house, Lewis Headley built the house for us, and that was in uh, Shea Wen. Uh, we lived in that for a short period of time, and I worked at the hospital as a registrar, and I was travelling backwards and forwards through Anglesey when I had to sleep over in the hospital, and there was a bed there for me. Mum um, was on her own at Anglesey. So then when I decided after six months to go into general practice with Godfrey Taylor and John App did, um, we needed a house in Geelong. So that's when we bought Nurchison Court. Hmm. It cost us five and a half thousand pounds um, in 1950. So was that new? Yes. The new house? New house, just been built. 1959, or I guess it was, or 58, we moved in there. And then I bought. Um, I was born in 58. Right. So, w did you, was I first in Geelong or in Anglesey when I was little? You were first in Anglesey at, at mm. uh, the, the guest house. Yeah. Uh, um, and Nancy and Les Headley ran. Uh, what was it called? Um, not so Sabon, it was Debonair. Debonair, yes. So we were living there actually and paying... While well, the house was being built. Exactly, yeah. And paying small board on it and they looked after us in that way. But uh, Nancy and Les of course never had children and uh, when we adopted you they were delighted that little baby in the, in the place. Nancy was rushing around looking after you as well as... I remember going back to their place years and years later when we had Chinese Sam Shongs, whatever they're called, um, Chinese outfits and things, and going down there for dinner to Debonair. Yeah. As, as a small, like, probably four-year-old or things like that. Could have been, yes. Mm. Well, we were friendly with them for quite a number of years. This was part of Aboriginal. I never ever crossed my mind that that was the situation, that he was of mixed race. And... Um, I think with, with some uh, sadness that I used to tell Aboriginal jokes, which of course wouldn't have pleased him very much. Oh. <coughs> so they moved up, their house at the end was at the top of Noble Street, up high. Yes. And that was, that they lose it in the bushfire? <coughs> uh, I'm not sure. It could well have, they would have died mm. by then. Um, he was a, was he a returned military man though, wasn't he? I'm sure I got... Did I get the inkwell off him? You could have. I don't know where that ever went to. It was made out of a bomb fuse. Uh, it could have been in the army. I, I've forgotten hmm. details of that. Yeah, they built a, another house. Up, it was an extension of Noble Street. I've forgotten the name. On the... On, yeah. The road itself. But, <coughs> <coughs> but um, both Nancy and, and Les died up there. But I, I'm not too sure about the, the bushfire. That would have been in 1969, wouldn't it? Mm. I think well, that it was earlier than that. 65, I think, the bushfire. Was it? Yeah. I went googling on the bushfire at Anglesey, and there's almost no record of it on the internet. Isn't it? No. Mm. There was one record, uh, which was an Anglesey thing, saying I think there was 14 or 16 houses lost in there, and it was really like a two-line entry was all there was. Mm. Because I remember the big thing was that all the pine plantations uh, on the way into Anglesey were all just down to white ash. Yeah, yeah. I remember <coughs> I was playing golf that day and it was hot as back then. And um, we were playing about the 13th hole. And it looked over to the northwest and we could see a plume of smoke coming up behind the hill. We said, oh, there's a fire over there. And we played the 13th and we were halfway down the 14th and the, and the fire came over the hill, whoosh, like that, down into the forest area to the west of the golf club. And um, we panicked. 
I left my ball in the middle of the fairway somewhere and took off to the car. But prior to that, uh, the fire truck had gone past and somebody standing on the back of it yelled out at us as we were playing golf, haven't you stupid bastards got a home to go to? Oh, oh cheeky bugger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then of course the fire came over the hill and we realised what was going on. So that's when I, I, went, I had that big car then, a shed or something, got into that and drove up towards the house in, Engels, in Noble Street and the police had a roadblock <coughs> uh, there and wouldn't let me proceed so I parked it in Miller's driveway and sneaked down along the golf course and back up to Noble Street to the house mm. and uh, there's a fellow following me with a, with a movie camera taking all the shots you know what mm. I was doing <coughs> I was putting out little ember fires on the way with a tree branch got up to the house and went right round that and couldn't find any, any sign of the house being burnt and I went back to the back to fill a bucket of water and the, this photographer bloke yelled, there's a fire under your house! So I raced down and in the garage so I had wood stored at the end of the garage. Mm, at the back of where you parked the car? Yeah. Mm. <coughs> and the fire had trickled in through the grass and leaves into the wood heap and started to burn that. Of course the house would have gone up. So we pulled the wood heap apart and I poured the water from the bucket onto that, put the fire out and saved the house. I wonder who he was then. He was he was taking movie or stills of you? Movie, yeah. Some amateur photographer. Oh. Tourist of some sort. That, uh, but he followed you up to the house, didn't yeah. he? Mm. Somewhere. Underwear.